everybody, welcome to the Arboretum again. My name's Kitty behind the camera there, that's Jenny. Hey. And we are the naturalist interns here at the Arboretum. We're here to bring you another weekly dose of nature fun if you're stuck at home and looking for a way to bring some nature back into your life. Uh, for this week, we are in Victoria Woods, which is one of the old growth forests in the Arboretum. Uh, the trees here are over a hundred years old. It's never been clear cut. Which makes this a pretty fantastic habitat. Now, what I think we're gonna do today is we're gonna take a walk through Victoria's Woods and see uh, what's out there, what makes this place unique. And I think the best way to start it off is what, with one of my favorite plants here. So let's come on and take a look. So, this plant here is a pretty neat little shrub. This is called Leatherwood. And Leatherwood is a pretty fun plant to look at this time of the year because it is a very early blooming plant and you take a closer look you'll notice that the flowers are just starting to come out it has these lovely little bright yellow flowers the unique thing about leatherwood is that it produces flowers a lot of times earlier on in the year before other plants have started to bloom and it also makes these flowers before it has leaves so that makes these bright yellow flowers a real treat to see and really, really apparent on this shrub, which is fantastic. Now, the coolest thing about Leatherwood is where it gets its name from. It's a pretty funny name, but it actually is because of the really tough and elastic bark that this shrub has. Take a look at this branch. Any normal branch, if you were to maybe bend it or twist it or probably break right away. It's usually pretty brittle, but Leatherwood is called Leatherwood because it has such elastic bark. Look at that. In fact, I could even tie this in a knot and it wouldn't even break. Look at that. That's pretty neat. Well, that wasn't a very good knot. Let me try again. And this, this twig is completely fine, will not break. It just has really, really elastic bendy wood, which I think is pretty awesome. So this is a pretty special shrub to see around. And the bright yellow flowers, of course, like a lot of other flowers, are these bright yellow colors, these really, really nice, pretty colors, and it probably smells fantastic to a lot of insects as well because it wants to attract all these pollinated insects to come drink the nectar, come collect the pollen, and in turn pollinate this plant as well. So blooming early on in the year uh, can take advantage of uh, the insects that are around because a lot of other things aren't blooming. So all the pollinating, pollinating insects are going to flock to these early blooming plants for a delicious snack and in turn help pollinate the plant as well, which is pretty awesome. Now, of course, it's not just Leatherwood that's cool in Victoria Woods. I'm going to pass over to Jenny. She's going to show you something else that we found. Yeah, you know what? This forest being an old growth forest has trees, kind of an all stage of life. So we have some nice live ones. But there's also a bunch of dead logs around too, and they can be really cool. So I figured we can go check one of those guys out. And there's a nice rotting one over there that we can have a good look at. Actually, even over here, there's a nice falling down, rotting log over here. And it's a bit of a funny thing because sometimes when these trees die and they fall down, people feel a need to maybe clean up that fallen tree. They think, well, now it's dead. It's not contributing to the forest anymore. But that's actually not true. That dead tree still has a whole lot of life in it and around it. It's still contributing a lot to the ecosystem because as that tree rots away, it supports a whole decomposer community. So things like fungus or different insects will make their way in and start to break down that log. It's an important food source for those animals. It also becomes a bit of a kind of micro habitat. So a lot of different animals will seek shelter underneath it. So a lot of insects or other arthropods, salamanders might take shelter underneath it. So these logs are really important. And as they get broken down further and further, all the nutrients inside the log are getting recycled too. It gets kind of returned back to soil, taken up by other plants. So it's a pretty important thing, these old dead, rotting logs and if you ever see an old log on the ground definitely a good choice to leave it alone and one of my favorite things to look at these logs or to do of these logs is to not only look at them and appreciate them for what they do but also to roll one over and see what's kind of making use of it today so why don't we do that all right guys come a little closer and we'll roll this log over and see what we can find underneath so there is a nice Lots worm that's been decomposing away um, at 
maybe the soil underneath it or seeking shelter underneath this log. Um, and funnily enough, it, worms kind of have a reputation here in um, Ontario, North America for being like amazing decomposers. They're so good for your garden. We definitely want this around. Except that's not always the case. Here in Ontario, we actually don't have any native worms. So these guys, all the worms you find in Ontario are actually invasive. All our native worms from like way, way, way long ago uh, were taken away by the glaciers all those years ago. So these worms are either from further down in the Americas or even from Asia and Europe. We have species from there too. And like any invasive species, they're actually not the best to have around. You know, they may be amazing decomposers. They make really quick work of decomposing matter, but that's actually not great for the ecosystem here. See, our ecosystems have now evolved to kind of be an environment where we don't have such fast decomposers like these worms. So now when you get a worm that is kind of hanging out of this ecosystem, it breaks down leaf litter. So all these kind of leaves and kind of uh, veggie, vegetative material breaks it down way faster than our native plants or animals kind of need. So that's really not good. A lot of the other animals that may want a heavier leaf litter layer or maybe um, they want kind of denser leaf litter, it's not great for them and this kind of is detrimental to their habitat. So earthworms not as good as everybody makes them out to be even though they are a pretty interesting and awesome animal in and of itself. Um, just not really what we want around here all the time. But you can see that little guy was definitely taking advantage of the log over here. Now I see over here we also have a little isopod friend. Look at that. Hi. Oh, good eye. So there's a little in there. isopod here. He's like, ah. But these guys are really cool. So these guys are amazing decomposer. But they're not an insect. So a lot of people kind of stereotype these funny... Oh, I dropped him. I'm sorry. They stereotype these funny little arthropods as maybe being an insect, but that's actually not true. All insects have six legs and you can kind of see when he tucks over that he has many, many more than six legs. Uh, these isopods are actually a crustacean. So they are more closely related to like the crabs and the lobsters you find in a supermarket than your like traditional insect. So that's kind of fun. Um, so he's working hard decomposing things away. What else do we have here? So bits of fungus that's kind of breaking down the wood. Fungus are great for breaking down really hard fibers, things like cellulose and lignin, all those tough plant fibers in really woody material like this. That may be harder or take longer for other things to kind of break down. Now you can see a little bit here as well. And you know in what? There. Speaking of fungus, there's all sorts of great um, fungus in an old growth forest like Victoria Woods and I did a little bit earlier scope out some really cool ones so we can actually maybe go visit those guys as well. So these are an early blooming fire and they're just starting to come out now. These are their leaves. That's why they're yeah. called trout lilies. They have all these splotching on them that kind of look like trout skin. So maybe in a couple of weeks we'll come back here and revisit them when they're out of flowering. But they're all kind of starting to come out now, which is really cool. All that kind of green coming up through the brown leaf litter. Lots and lots of good stuff are coming out now. But yeah, all over the floor of Victoria Woods, you see lots and lots of trout lily leaves, which is pretty fantastic. Yeah. They're nice green color with some purple modeling on them yeah so as Very we're trying pretty. to walk through to our next little station we'll be careful not to step on too many of these guys so the thing that i want to show you guys next is this stuff right here you know we talked about how Fungus can be a really important part of the decomposer community on a rotting log or old dead log like this. 
Um, and this is showing some great examples. So this is a shelf bunk. This is going off the side of this log. And I actually brought with me today uh, one of our biodiversity sheets. Um, if you're interested in these, you guys can order them online through our website. But the one that I brought with us today is our fungi one. Fungus in your One of my favorite ones. So pretty. Look at all those colors. So I figure we can kind of go through this and see if we can match it up to anything. All right, let's take a closer look. So there's the biodiversity sheet and there is the fungus we're looking at. Does any of it look similar? You know what? I think turkey tail is probably one of the best matches we have here. So I think this is actually a turkey tail mushroom. And turkey tails are really awesome. They're kind of named for their appearance in two different ways. You know, they are named turkey tails because they have that big fan-like um, appearance of all those stripes across it. It kind of looks like the tail of a turkey. But it's not just its common name that kind of refers to its appearance. Um, but the scientific name for this mushroom, Tramides versicolor, also kind of talks about how this mushroom looks. See, versicolor means of many colors or of different colors. I mean, that's because turkey tails, they come in a huge range of different colors. So maybe red, brown, orange, green. I mean, that's why in our biodiversity issue, you see this picture is a little bit more brown, but the specimen we have here has a little more green and red in it. So it's a pretty interesting thing. Um, and turkey tails are an interesting mushroom in that they have been known to have kind of medicinal properties. So um, sometimes we will use, well, some companies will kind of modify them and process them and extract kind of these chemicals that are good for helping to fight cancer, which is kind of a neat little thing. They're one of uh, North America's most common mushrooms, but they have pretty awesome properties to them, which is neat to think about. And you know, it's not just turkey tails that I found here earlier. Uh, there was another mushroom here earlier that I found. Oh, here are some right behind me, right here. Ooh, that looks spooky. You know, it's a weird looking one. I bet you it's probably on our biodiversity one here. too. Let's take a look. Mm, I'm thinking that these guys might be dead man's fingers. And they're named that because they look like a dead man's fingers coming up off of the substrate that's feeding on. One thing, one of the things I love about mushroom is a lot of them have really, really good descriptive names. Um, but it's kind of interesting because you'll notice as I'm talking about these kind of species, I'm specifically calling them mushrooms and not fungi when I'm talking about their appearance. And that's because when I talk about the mushroom, I'm actually talking about the fruiting body only. So this part that we see sticking out um, that we associate with the species is what I'm calling the mushroom. But the mushroom is not the entirety of the kind of organism. It's really only the fruiting body, kind of like the flower of a tree. Most of the fungus of this organism is actually made of these tiny little thread-like filaments called mycelium and this mycelium kind of works its way through the substrate so whatever it's feeding on whether it's like an old log or something else um, and that's what's gonna make up most of the body of the organism whereas every now and then when the fungus um, is ready to maybe create structures help spread its spores for reproduction it throws out these kind of mushrooms. Uh, traditionally, they're what you kind of see as the stock and cap or maybe the mushroom you have off your pizza. Um, and that's the part that we tend to see most often. A lot of that mycelium is so thin and, um, that we really don't see it very much, uh, even though it makes up the bulk of the organism, which is kind of neat. Yeah, so that's just a little taste of the stuff we have going on in Victoria Woods today. So a really cool tree, but also some decomposers and a dead rotting log so lots of neat things and definitely if you're ever out and about in a forest like this keep an eye out not only those live plants but on some of the things that are hanging out on the dead stuff on the ground too because that's really cool and definitely remember if you are kind of checking out a rotting log and stuff you want to leave it alone because it's still so important to the habitat even though it may not initially look like it so that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining us and definitely for next week, tune in as we explore some different parts of nature.